So let's open up our Visual Studio program. Things taking some time to load there. Okay, so we're going to do uh, the uh, bottom choice here on the right-hand column, getting started. We're going to click on Create a New Project. And again, it's going to be a C-sharp console app using the .NET Core framework. So we make that selection. Go ahead and click Next. Let's call this one Assignment 2. And you can leave the solution name as well. And then just click Create. While that is creating, let me get back here and go to our assignment page. And so right here then is the instructions for uh, assignment number two. So you can see essentially it's titled hello input input. So we're going to be taking input from the user and then we're going to concatenate that input to the the text string there, hello. So if I come down here, these are the actual assignment requirements, the assignment two requirements and instructions. I'll click there. So we've done the first step, which is creating the new console project, created the name assignment two. And so the next thing we wanna do now is create a prompt where we identify the user, what type of data we want them to put in when we add the next line of code, which is going to be to, you know, take the input from the user, which would be their first name. So if we flip back here to our Visual Studio program, inside of our main method is where we're working, and that's true of pretty much, uh, not pretty much, all of the assignments that you're going to be doing in this class. So the first thing we can do is just go ahead and modify then our original console right line statement here. Instead of reading hello world, we're asking it now to, or we want to inform the user that we'd like them to type in their first name. So we just type in there, enter first name. Double check, uh, that's the instruction, right? Yeah, enter first name. And so that line of code gives them that prompt, right? Now on the next line, we need to create a variable of string type. And we'll just type in then first name as the name of that variable. Then what we want to assign to it is going to be a console.read line method and that's where the user then will actually type in the value and then once they press enter it'll assign it to our variable first name okay so this is pretty typical you know of most programs especially console apps you're gonna have prompts that identify to the user what type of input you're looking for and then follow that up with a console read line where you take their input and then assign it to a variable so that then later on we can use the value they typed in in some sort of output Back to the instructions. In step two now, uh, actually we did step two, sorry. I got a little ahead of myself, didn't I? Yeah, so we already did this step here. So this is where you actually are taking the input from the keyboard and assigning it to your first name variable. So it's actually step three now where we're creating our next prompt, which is gonna be the enter last name prompt. And then at step four, we'll do just like we did in step two. The only difference is we'll create a variable named last name that will be assigned the input that the user types in. So let's do those two steps as well. So we'll just do a console dot right line, parentheses and in quotes, enter last name. And that is a statement there. So we want to end it with the semicolon. Looks like I typoed my right line, didn't I? See, this is one of the nice things about using the IDE. I didn't have to run this program to see that I made a mistake. You just get it as you're typing in your source code there. And if you're not sure what the error is, just get in the habit of resting your mouse over that little red squiggly. Sometimes it'll be a green squiggly. Uh, but anyway, it's telling me that the console doesn't contain a definition called virtual line. <laughs> well, that's probably true. So 
you know, again, hopefully we can recognize from that little information that what we've done here is just not type it out correctly. So once we do type it out, you can see there the little uh, red squiggly disappeared. Okay, so then I want to go ahead and just like we did up above, create a new variable. So we're just uh, declining a new variable, or declaring, I should say, a new variable called last name. And then that'll be equal to the results of a console.read line, which is taking the user input. And all of these are statements. We always want to end them with a semicolon. Okay, so there's the first four steps then for assignment number two. Prompting the user to type in the first name, retrieving the input from the user and taking that input and assigning it to this variable, which is a string type. And then in the next line, again, prompting the user, this time to enter their last name. And then again, capturing that input using the read line and assigning it to the variable, which is a string type called last name. Seems pretty straightforward, would you agree? I always recommend you save your work as you go also. Let's get in the habit of doing control S as you type out your code. I think I've mentioned to you, but maybe not. Let me just make a quick change here. I'll just delete a couple of characters. Uh, if you look at the top of the source code window where your program.cs name is, if you see an asterisk at the end of the name there, that means that there's been a change in your source code that hasn't been saved yet. So that's a good visual identifier for you so that you make sure that you do keep your code saved. So as soon as I do my control S, you'll see that asterisk disappear. So now I know it's all saved and up to date. Power goes out, no problem. I just reopen it, my source code's still there. All right, so then we get to step five here where we're gonna write an output statement and what we're essentially wanting to do is contain the text string hello along with the values of first name and last name. And so if I typed in Bill as my first name and Bennett as my last name, the output that should be generated from that should be hello space, and it's important to have the spacing in here too, hello space Bill space Bennett. So, so it's an array. Uh, no, no, it's not at this point. That's what I was uh, saying to you earlier is our goal here is to first do this assignment today, which is just simply assigning the uh, input from the user to a, an individual variable, right? So first name is just, that's all it is, is it, it can hold one value, it's of string type, whatever the user types in, that's stored in first name. Now we've created a second variable called last name, also a string type, but whatever the user types in here, that's going into that other variable called last name. So we have two separate variables at this point. So what I'm doing is I'm getting you ready to go to the array in the next assignment. In the next assignment, instead of having two separate variables here, you'll first declare your array, and then you'll use the array down here and down here when you take the input from the user. So we're not doing the array yet. This is still simple variables at this point. I actually thought we were going to use the strings in the um, first name and last name and add them as an array. Not in this assignment. I believe it's the midterm assignment. We can look ahead here in the list. Yeah, see in the, in the array now, I mean, I'm sorry, in, in the assignment midterm, that's now where you're creating the array and taking the input from the user, and then you're gonna output the array information. It's still very similar. It's gonna say hello, and then whatever their first name is, and whatever their phone number is, and whatever their email address is, that's what you're taking in is their first name, uh, phone number, and email. But you're going to now, when you create this output statement, you're going to be using the index values of zero for the first input, one for the second input and three for the email input. So that's not until the midterm. So when you're working on assignments, your assignments are always kind of one lecture behind, so to speak, because what we're really having you do at this point is just take what we taught you on Tuesday, which was learning how to do the read line and just assigning it to a variable. 
since we talked about variables, I mean, I'm sorry, arrays here today, then your next assignment, which will be the midterm, that's when you then start incorporating the arrays. Okay. Okay, so a good question. Don't want that any confusion sense. there. You're just excited to get to your arrays, aren't you? Yes, I am. <laughs> arrays are fun, very helpful. But for this assignment, assignment number two, no array necessary. It's just a simple little thing where we're taking input. That's, that's the new thing, if you think about it in this assignment. Your first assignment, you just did static output. Now you're doing dynamic output in the sense that you're taking variable values from a user and combining those as output, but still doing it the simplified way, which is just assigning each input from the user to its own individual variable. Now you, in the main or in the uh, midterm, that's where you're going to now get a little bit more sophisticated, still taking input from the user, but assigning all of that input from the user to a single variable, which will be of array type. So that takes the input, gives them the prompts, takes the input. And so now back to step two, uh, right here we're at step five. What it's asking us to do then is to concatenate the text hello along with the first name and last name. And this is the output then that we're looking for. It should be hello space, first name entry space, last name. That's all there is to it. And you may think this is too simple, but it's, you'd be surprised how many people are going to mess this one up. So help me out here. What, what uh, object am I going to use? What method am I going to use? And then maybe you can help me combining the concatenated components all together too. So somebody just tell me what's, what's the object we're going to use here so that we can out, output to our screen. Right. Uh, that would be the method, what's, but you always have to list the object that the method comes from. So what's the object? First name and last name. No. What, what's the text that's in green on my screen there? Oh, console. Console, console right. So you want to start with the object console because that's the one that contains the right line code. So we list the console followed by, and I don't know if I've mentioned this to you, this, every time that we do the period after the object name and then follow with the property or a method, that's called dot notation. I don't know if I mentioned that or not, but that's common in all modern languages that you identify, you know, what we're pointing to again is just here out in the .NET framework, go find this block of code for us. So we're actually telling the compiler in this case, hey, you know, go to the .NET library, in the system library, because we've got the using system directive up there, and it's searching now for the console object within that library. And then the next thing is, well, what method do you want to use? So we type in right or right line. Either one would work in this case. But you always have to represent the cons, uh, I should say, the object that contains the method or the property that you're attempting to use. And then we want to just assign to our right line, or we're not doing any assignment here, are we doing concatenation in the parentheses, the output we actually want to generate. So if you'd like, because we do it the old way first and then come back and show you the new way. So let's start out, this would be a complete statement, just I'm not really outputting anything. So inside of the parentheses, I need to delineate the fact that this is going to be a string value that I'm outputting. So what, what character do I start with here? A quote. A quote. Very good. So then I'll type in the word hello because that's the text that I first want to see in the output. And if we're doing the old composite method then, I would put in a space here, then curly braces with a zero in front of it, indicating the first variable that I add after we write out the string value here. That'll be the, value, the variable that we'll grab the value from. Then I'll add another space, another set of curly braces, this time with the number one in it to get the value from the second variable. And then we'll just end the string like that. So that now requires us to add the comma, followed by the actual names of the variables, which is the first name variable, another comma, and the last name variable. And uh, most languages you deal with these days will be case sensitive. So you just have to make sure that whatever you type in here for your variable name is exactly the same, both in spelling and in case, when you go to reference it down here in the output. 
and that I, mm-hmm. we've talked about this, but I'm not sure if I've shown it to you, uh, that this is called camel case because it begins with a lowercase first letter, letter, and then each subsequent word that would be in there is capitalized. That's very typical in most modern languages to use camel casing for your variable names. All right, so the method that we showed you here, this is the older method uh, called the composite formatting method. Let's go ahead and run this now, control F5. And so when my console window comes up, there's our prompt asking for our first name. You are allowed to refer to your driver's license if you'd like on these. And then my last name, and then I press enter. Now the final output kicks in there, and that's the way it should read. Hello, space, first name, space, last name. And that's all there is to it. Again, that's the old way. So now if we wanted to do it the new way, what you do is you put the dollar sign, the string interpolation operator, right before your string. And instead of having to have your variable names out here at, after the string, now I can actually take the variable names and just plug them right in to that string. And I think that this just makes it so much more readable, just a lot easier to deal with things. You don't have to put anything out to the right of the quotes there anymore. So that's just, to me, really nice and clean, right? You, you can Would see you the text. Us? And you can see the spacing, because concatenation, a lot of students usually forget the spacing between the words. Go ahead. Would you prefer us to use this method than the other? I would suggest you do. I would get used to it, because this didn't come along until uh, version 6 of C Sharp. And 6 has been out there for a long time now. In fact, I think eight's the current one. So, yeah, this is, you're not going to have a problem with this running on you know, modern-day computers. They'll all support 6 and greater, I'm sure.